Hey everybody, welcome, it's Caleb. In this video, we're gonna talk about how we can create an edit form and have the data automatically show up in there as the default value. We're gonna talk about some of the errors we've been getting in the console. This is basically a continuation of the last two episodes, so be sure to check those out to get up to speed. If you want to follow along using the repo, then I just committed added modal and styled form, and I will push this to the repo. So here is the URL if you want to follow along from this point in time. So back to our original problem. We have this error or warning, I guess. You provided a value prop to a form field without an on change handler. And this makes this thing read only. And it gives us a suggestion to use default value. So if we go back and in our code, we find where we have value and we change this to default value. Now we can go in here and change the data and it works. And on refresh, we don't get any errors regarding the form input at all. So that's good. But what exactly is the difference between default value and value? Well, by default, <laughs> it's kind of confusing, but by default, I would use value. Then you're just required to provide an on change event handler. So what happens when you change the value? That's what is essential for the situation. Basically, eventually we're going to tie this value here to our state in our application, which is going to come from a specific employee. So instead of saying Jane Doe, it'll say something like Sal. And when we change that data in the form, we want to basically update the value being displayed. So that is why we need the on change. It's to associate the value inside of here with the state of our application, which we will update here. So that's pretty dang confusing. Let's just go through an example and try to get our employee data to show up right here. Basically, anytime we're going to do something like that, we have to get the value sent from above. So we're going to say props.name. And similarly, I'm gonna get rid of the on change for right now. Same down here, we're going to replace this value with props role. This props variable needs to find and we're going to define that as a parameter here. So we'll say props and then this is going to be passed from the employee file. So when we say edit employee we're going to say name is equal to and you can see we already got that value sent from above again. So we're just going to basically pass it on down to the edit employee. So props dot name and role is going to be props dot role. So let's go back to our page, hit update, and look at that. It automatically filled it with the name and the role. So that is step one. The next step is to have the edit modal maintain the state of what is in that form. So when we change it, we wanna store that information in a state variable. The end goal is we hit update, we grab the most up-to-date value and replace what's on the original page. So we wanna be able to go in here and change this to some other name and when we hit update, it will replace this name here. So let's talk about how we can store the data. And real quick, while I'm at it, I'm gonna update the width of this thing. You know, I get these like random fixes I want to do as we're going. But yeah, let's go on a little side quest to get this looking a little bit better. Let's just go in here and say, min width is 350 pixels. We'll do the same thing for the max width just so it's all the same size. Max width is 350 pixels. I haven't had any issues with different heights, but if we had different length of titles, you might need to change that as well by setting a min and max. But yeah, that looks a lot better. Now let's go back to what we were doing, which was, I totally forget, ADHD here, my golly. All right, so we're going to go back to the edit employee and we are going to maintain whatever value is right here inside of a state variable. So we'll just copy this line here and we're going to replace it. We're gonna need two of them actually, so let's push that one down and this is going to be the name and then set name. The default value is actually going to come from props, so props.name, same here. We're going to say role, set role, and the default is going to come from props.role. So basically we're going to maintain state in this component, 
but we're going to get what it starts with from above. And that's what, by above, I mean from the parent component. And that's what's going to show up down here in the value. So instead of props.name, we're going to replace this with the name variable. And same thing for down here, we will replace this with the role variable. And at this point, it should look exactly the same. We didn't change any of the functionality and it still works just fine. But now we have the ability to put the on change to update that state. So let's start with the name. We will say on change. And what are we going to do here? We will just have an arrow function. And this is going to invoke set name and pass in what is currently in the text box. And the way you do that is with e.target.value. Where e here, this is just a variable name. You can name it whatever you want. You just have to define it as a parameter on that function. So we'll save that. Let's check to see if that works here. So Caleb Curry, uh, close enough, and it works. So that's one that's working, but the role is still broken. I can't change the value of that. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here, making sure to update which variable we are updating. It's kind of a confusing way of saying that, but you guys get what I'm saying. So on change, and then we will change this to set role. Now we should be able to update both of these depending on which one we want. So obviously that's a lie. So we'll just say uh, dev. So at this point, we basically create a variable, a state variable. We load the default value from the properties that are passed down to the edit employee component. And as we change that form, we keep track of what the most recent change is. The final step is on update, take that most recent change or whatever's in that state variable and apply it to the original page, which is exactly what we're gonna be talking about in the next video. The way we do it is a little bit strange, but once we go through that video, it should make some sense. So stay tuned for the next episode. I'll see you there.